Okay guys, in this tutorial I'll try to show how to use the assembly machine in Witness Manufacturing Edition number 23. Uh, so this is my first video tutorial, so uh, wish me luck. Uh, first I will start building the model. Uh, I'll define the elements which we will need. Uh, it's going to be two different parts. I'll need also two buffers for them. And I'll need the machine which is going to be uh, the assembly machine. I'll turn the parts to be active in order to be able to enter their buffers. For the first one, say that the inter arrival time is going to be one minute and they will come one by one. And they will, the output rule will be entering to buffers, push to buffers 001. So I've changed uh, the parts to be active. Therefore, I have uh, these options available now. The inter arrival time, lot size, uh, and the output rule, which is pushed to buffers 001. I confirm with OK. I'll do similarly with part 02, turning it to be active. I'll define the inter arrival time to be five say uh, lot size 5 as well, output rule, I'll write push, and I'll double click buffers 02, so I avoid a typing mistake. Confirm with OK, OK, and our good habit is to switch on the element flow, so I'll visit and the option up here, view, element flow, I'll check labor rules as well. I'll confirm with OK. I see that the rules should be correctly entered. I'll limit the size of the buffers uh, to 10. So if the buffers get full, it still fits our screen. I'll confirm OK. And now the assembly machine, I'll double click to get the details. Let's say that the cycle time is going to be five minutes. I'll call it assembly to be clear about it. And uh, I'll start with the output rule. In our case, we're going to make the products go out of the system already. So our output rule is going to be push to ship. Okay, validate. It's cool. It's okay. I can I can confirm right now, and we see that uh, it's pushing to ship. Now we need to connect with the buffers. For that, I'll do a new thing. I'll change the type of the machine. I'll choose assembly machine. And now this field became active for me. I need to specify how many parts are to be assembled. So let's make it a case of two. So I'll change the quantity here, the input quantity to two. The most difficult part, I need to define the input rule properly. I'll go to the input rule. And the rule is called sequence. So you need to actually write sequence with this slash. Then another rule comes, which is weight. So sequence space slash weight space again. Now I'm telling 
witness that uh, it has to wait until uh, the rule is available to be carried out. The rule is gonna be take one number, one part, one part from buffers O1 uh, to make it uh, waiting for just one part. I need to enter hash and number one in brackets. Then also one part from buffers O2. So hash again. And one part from buffers O2. Let's show it uh, the whole rule. Uh, check. Okay, it's validated. So it says wait until you've got at least one part available from buffers O2 and one part available from buffers O1 O, okay, O1 and O2. Uh, if we want to make different numbers, this would mean that we're waiting for 100 parts uh, from buffers O2 until it's available the machine has to wait. In such a case, we would also need to, I'll confirm this dialog, we would also need to change the quantity in case we want to assemble 100 pieces of one part and one piece of the other one, the input quantity would have to be 101 here. Our case is two, I'll confirm it okay. And you see it's connected with the rule sequence. Let's check whether it's working. I'll start and I'll switch on the slow motion. You see that the two parts always meet in the assembly machine and then they're processed, they're assembled. What else can we do here? What's advisable to do? I'll stop the simulation. I'll check the stats. So I'll open the type because one way is to click on part 01, check the statistics, and please observe that this is checked. Okay, I check the statistics for part 01. Then I can do the same for part 02. Or if I open the type here, I can do, I can have a look on the stats for all the parts included in the model at once. What else can I do? Uh, to be able to work with the assembled part uh, later on in a better way, uh, you see that uh, from the statistics, that uh, only parts O1 are actually produced, are shipped out of the model. Uh, because the part O2 becomes uh, a part of part O1. Uh, to avoid this problem, what else can I do? I can include another part into the model. I'll rename it to product. So it makes better sense for me. I'll confirm with OK. I'll go to the details of assembly machine again. And here in actions on finish, so these actions on finish, I will define one more rule, which is, okay, validate and it works. Alternatively, I can just double click the name here so I avoid the typing typing mistakes. I confirm it okay. Uh, no, 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 sorry. Uh, one more thing which I can do. It's not necessary, but let's check whether it's gonna work. Uh, I can change uh, how the part actually looks like. So it's easier for me to observe the parts later on in the process and to make sure that it works the way which it's supposed to work. I'll run the model again. 
Okay, I, I do not see any changes at this moment, but what's gonna be different? I'll stop the model. I'll check the stats of part. And do you see now we are producing uh, the products? So whatever I need to do with, uh, with uh, the parts which is being produced uh, in further rules or variables, uh, I can refer to the part product. And in case we were using more machines, we would see, uh, we would see, we would see, uh, I'll show in a sec. I'll make this one work for a bit longer. I'll reset to zero, I'll run the model, I'll make it slower. And we see that the part coming out of assembly machine uh, looks differently. That's because ch uh, I changed the icon. Uh, this one, this change was not very clever. Let's try a different look. Okay, now maybe it's a little bit better than before. So this icon now represents the, the product. Okay, I guess that's it. That's all for the assembly machine. So uh, good luck with that. And maybe uh, to repeat a little bit, uh, once you're using the assembly machine, it's easy to choose assembly from this dialog, but never forget to change the input quantity here as well. Uh, otherwise your results gonna be uh, not, not good. You, you will get wrong results. Okay, have a good time. Uh, have fun with witness.